Hello, and I welcome to my presentation on dressing after stroke. So why are we talking about dressing? So dressing is a very important activity for independence. It helps you be able to start your day and do something on your own. It's also a very therapeutic activity for reasons we'll talk about on the next slide. So some of the reasons it might be harder if you have a stroke is that it's bilateral activity. That also makes it a good therapeutic activity because it makes me focus on using both hands. It also requires a lot of fine motor skills for doing things like buttons, but also sometimes with lining up zippers. And if you have smaller clasps or tying shoes, all sorts of fine, all sorts of good functional fine motor stuff in there as well. And if you have perceptual deficits following your stroke, it can be harder to remember to dress both sides of your body or to find clothes that you've laid out. So it's good for that as well, as well as with apraxia, with playing out your motor movement. Um, can make it difficult if you have trouble standing. Um, that's another thing that uh, might be harder for you for standing up for pulling up pants or adjusting clothing. And then also fatigue is a big um, potential barrier at, um, to dressing after stroke. So that's all stuff we'll talk about today. <clears throat> so we're gonna start with some general tips for dressing after stroke. <clears throat> First one is sit down. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, as we go through, we'll also talk about different ways to arrange things as you're sitting down that you could possibly um, work on dressing with that. You can even, uh, with sitting down, you could even start your day in bed and then get dressed either at the edge of bed or in the bed itself if you find that's easier to just have the bed so that you can lay down for pulling stuff up. Again, whatever works for you is absolutely what you want to do. These are just some tips and some different techniques you could try on your own and see if that helps. Um, so also you want to start with the affected limb as well as use it as much as you can. That's a good way to make sure that um, it's there. It might have less mobility. So by starting with it, it can be easier to use your non-affected side. Um, second, because it'll be able to maneuver sort of, and help your affected limb. Um, and then with using as much as you can, it's also good for maintaining your range and strength and everything like that. <clears throat> So obviously we want you to keep you, want you to stay safe when you're doing this dressing. So if you're doing it while seated, making sure you're doing it in a way where you're not gonna lose your balance. And when you stand up, also making sure that you have something you can push off of or something to help support you while you're standing, if that's what you need. Um, it's also a good, a good um, general tip to consider using more loose fitting and stretchy materials that might make your dressing easier. And then it also wouldn't be a bad idea to consider using some different adaptive equipment, if possible, um, as part of your dressing routine. <clears throat> so we're getting started. Best thing you can do ahead of time before actually getting dressed is to plan out your day's outfits and have everything ready and within reach of where you're going to be sitting to get dressed. Um, it can also be helpful to do some extra preparation prior to dressing. So for example, I have some different clothing items here. I'll be demonstrating some one technique of how to get on. So I have with me laid out already, I have a pair of pants, just some sweatpants, nice and easy. And I also have a different pair of jeans and then a button down shirt, a t-shirt, and then a jacket as well. And so um, there's also extra preparation you can be doing ahead of actually getting dressed. Which can be help, which can help you with your dressing and make it easier on you. So one of those things you can do is with like a pair of jeans like this. That's something you want to wear. It can be a lot harder to get the belt threaded through the loops as you're actually standing up, or while you're trying to do it seated, seated because you have to behind you. You got it requires a lot more reach. So one of the things you can do to prep yourself, prep your outfit beforehand, is actually what I'm doing right now, which is just taking the belt and threading it through the loops ahead of time so that it's all ready. You can just pull on these pants and the belt's already there for you. You don't have to worry about getting it threaded through. You don't have to worry about standing to do standing while you try to do that. Just one way that you can make things easier by having good plans ahead of time. So we will talk about pants first. Unfortunately with the camera for this, it's not gonna work well to demonstrate. But so like I said, elastic waist can be easier. So with these sweatpants I brought, um, they actually don't have an elastic waist, but they have a tie and then they have this slide button, which can be easy. It can be nice for for making it easier than having to actually tie it or if elastic sometimes get worn out. So it's just another option, a different fastening option you can use. 
So the first thing we're going to do is to start. I'll just demonstrate up here. So you want to start if, say, it's my left side that has uh, that was affected by the stroke. So I'm going to start by gathering up all the material on the left side of the pants down at the bottom together. So I'm cheating a little bit using my left hand, but just demonstrating. So I'm going to gather it all so that really all your all your leg, all your foot has to go through is just this part, rather than having to get through the entire length of the pants. It's just this little bit, which is easy. So then um, with, with this gathered up, you can either just have it on the ground and then uh, guide your affected leg into it. You could use a reacher if that's easier for you. Again, it depends on your balance as well as just what works better. So once you have this, you can get your leg into it, however works best for you, guiding it, or if you have the strength to get it in, that works great. So then you're going to guide the material up your leg to about your knee. Then you're going to get work, then you're going to work on the other side, which which should be easier. Um, and then once you have it up to your knees, or even you can go up to your thigh, up part way to your thigh, so that when you so that when you go to stand up, you have good support. But then it's also just a little bit that you need to pull up at the end, and so you don't need to stand for a long time. So sweatpants like these are nice because they're baggy, and so they're easier to get on versus something like the jeans might be a little tougher, but if that's something you want to work towards, absolutely great. It's a good challenge. But the jeans don't, don't have as much stretch, so that might be a little more difficult. Again, it's all about what works well for you and what um, you're trying to get out of custom. <clears throat> so t-shirts is the next thing I'm going to talk about. So again, it's actually going to start out pretty similar to how we started with um, the pants with gathering up. But also with a t-shirt, you have a little bit of an extra challenge in that you need to figure out which side's the front and which side's the back. And so then what we want to do is to take that and then lay it out on our lap with the neck facing away from us and the front of the shirt down. So then we're going to gather it up. I'll show up here. Gather up the material on the left side again so that um, our left side, our affected side doesn't have to go through as much material. There's not as much for it to get caught in. And everything. So what we're going to do next is to gather the material and then slide our affected side into it. So then we're with our affected side in it, we're going to slide the material up to the shoulder. And I'm going to take off my headphones. <clears throat> Once we have it up to the shoulder, we're going to put our unaffected side into the shirt. At this point, it's easier to pull over your head using your unaffected side. And then you can just adjust the shirt as needed from there. So for getting the shirt off at the end of the day, or if you want to change your outfit, whatever, um, it can be easier to pull the shirt, pull the go to the back of your neck on the shirt, and then pull it over your head before trying to get either side out, which might be a little different than maybe how you're used to, but it's just a way that you can get the shirt in front of you and you can see what you're doing a little better, and then just coming off. Again, getting your unaffected side out first might be easier, it might be easier to do the affected. It's whatever works best for you. So a long sleeve shirt is fairly similar. If it's just a right, if it's just a long sleeve t-shirt, it's gonna be a lot like doing the long sleeve. Uh, it's gonna be a lot like the short sleeve shirt t-shirt we just did. But if it's a button-up shirt like I have here, it's gonna we're gonna do it a little bit differently. So first you're gonna figure out which side is which. And then again, we're going to start by gathering up material on the affected side um, so that we have it there and ready to guide our, our affected side through um, in a shorter way. That's not going to require as much uh, finagling getting through the shirt. So again, we're gonna, after we get our affected side through, we're going to move the shirt up to our shoulder and then pull around the back. <clears throat> At this point, you want to find the sleeve of your unaffected side and pull it on. So at this point, you're pretty set. Then the next thing to do is to button. The button can be difficult. <coughs> so you might find that, it, that you need more practice with it. So it's easier to practice to the buttoning while you're not wearing the shirt. So that could be something you do just sitting and watching TV and just kind of working on that. Again, it's a lot of fine motor, but it's something that you can work on on your own while not wearing the shirt, which could be easy. You could use some sort of assistive device, which we'll talk about later. So when you do start with buttoning, though, it's going to be easier. It will probably be easier. 
to start from the bottom of the shirt because that way you kind of know, okay, I'm lined up. Sometimes it can be harder to tell at the top of the shirt if you're lined up or not for the buttoning. You don't want to get to the bottom and then realize that you're off a button starting from the very beginning. Um, so again, for taking this shirt off, some, and you might find it easier for you with long sleeve shirts to just knot it or unbutton it. If that's something that works, that's great. I know for some of our participants, that's what, the way they prefer to do long sleeve shirts. <coughs> Again, we don't want to we don't want to fix something that isn't broken. So if you have a way of doing this that works for you, please continue doing that, and then um, use any tips we're giving you as um, you want to try different things. But absolutely not something you need to change if it's already working. So if we're taking it off, it might be easier to pull it over your head, sort of like the t-shirt, before getting the arms off. Again, it just helps you be able to see what you're doing, and then um, in that way, it helps you to. Um, have a little more control and knowledge if you're having trouble seeing, uh, tr figuring out what's going on behind you um, for getting the arms off and for getting it around. It can be easier if you pull it over your head like I demonstrated there. And then we'll slide it off our unaffected side and we're all set. <clears throat> so next I'm going to talk a little bit about socks and shoes. <clears throat> so one thing that might be easier if you find is Trying different types of shoes like slip-on slip shoes can be great. Some people use no-tie shoes or elastic shoelaces, whatever works. Some people use shoe buttons, which I actually have not an example of a shoe with them in it, but I just have some different ones that um, you might we have available if you would like a pair. And absolutely just get the borrow those from us. So with those, how it works is you put the button in the holes for the top laces and then you tie. Um, the shoe around those, and then instead of untying it and retying it each time you take the shoe on and off, you just pop it off the buttons and then it's all set. One thing that could be helpful with that is to actually tie a stitch in the knot so that you can't actually untie the knot because some people might try, might inadvertently try to help and make things worse by untying it and then it's going to be more of an issue to retie it. Another um, good method is to use one handed tying which I have a video demonstrating because I'm not very good at it. And another thing um, that could be helpful is to use like a footstool or a box or maybe a little bit of chair um, to avoid bending if that's difficult. If you're able to get your foot up on that, it could make it a lot easier. And then also a way for getting on your socks and shoes, if you can, crossing your legs so that you don't have to bend as much. If you can't quite get one foot on, if one foot on top of your knee, that's all right to do the figure four. But it, at like as high as you can get it, just saves you less, saves you from bending more, and also just closes the distance that you're having to reach for that type of thing, keeps it closer, all that good stuff. So here's our one-handed shoe tying technique. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to tie your shoelaces with one hand. Step one, you're going to take the laces and cross one over the other just like you would in a normal shoe tying. You're going to bring the top one under the bottom one, making a normal knot. And then you're going to just kind of tidy it up. Second step, this lace you're going to step on with your other shoe. And then pull this lace nice and tight using your other foot. Then I'm going to tighten this side with my hand. Step three, I'm going to make a bunny ear. Then I'm going to take this loop and put it under this piece right here, just like this. Once I have it under the string that I'm holding with my other foot, I'm going to go back through this hole right here, just like this, and then pull it tight. After I have one loop, I'm going to take my loose string and I'm going to circle around the loop that I've already made. So I'm going to take the loose string, make a second bunny ear, and then go around the first one. And then this hole right here that I created when I went around, I'm going to take this right back through it. Just like this. And then I can tighten up the knot using one hand to create a normal looking bow. But I only used one hand. And that is one handed shoe time.
All right, so you don't need to see it again, but uh, that's a video that you can find online easily or written in an absolute friggin' link if that's something you were interested in learning, which I'm trying to do. <clears throat> so next I'm gonna talk a little about jewelry and accessories. So one thing that can be helpful is to use, is to wear bracelets if that's something you like to wear, is to wear ones that can slip on instead of clasps because those can just be difficult. Um, or like more elastic ones could be easier for slipping on and off without having to manage clasps as well. Uh, for earrings, you can use clip-on earrings or a wire style earring. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of up to your preference, which will work better, but it just might be easier for um, if wearing earrings is something you like to do, there's other options that you could try that don't involve so much fine motor of pinching and different things with um, involving your hand up by your ear. Um, so for watches that like I'm wearing, it can be easy to put easier to put the watch on your affected arm, and it might be easier with a stretch band. But so if you put it on your affected arm, it's going to be easier to hold it there and then actually do up the clasp or band with your unaffected arm. Um, for something like a tie, it's great to just consider keeping it tied. Um, that way, you don't have to retie it every time. You can just kind of loosen it up, take take it off over your head, and then you got that all set for the next time. Mm. I was also going to talk about with accessories, it's good to put to kind of have a good order to how you're putting things on. And doing these last um, is it easier because then when you have your watch or bracelet on or your earrings, you're not getting that stuff cocked um, as you're trying to get clothing over either your arm or uh, your head with the earrings. And then so also then when you're taking it off, it's better to take off your jewelry and accessories first and then go back to that stuff. I also want to talk a little bit about with jewelry and accessories as we get into the cold months. So a jacket is something that you would put on in a very similar way to how you do a long sleeve shirt. The only real difference is that with a jacket, the material might not be so easy to scrunch up with one hand to, um, for guiding your affected arm through. So instead of what you can do is sort of use your unaffected arm to help guide your other hand through or get your affected arm to the hole in the jacket, hole in the sleeve, and then sort of moving the sleeve over the arm from the outside, just however you can get um, that work through better, works great. And with jackets, having something with more of um, a smoother inside rather than something that has more friction, like um, sort of a felt liner or anything, will make it easier for it to slide on and off over your clothing that you're wearing. Another thing to talk about, so hats are something that are fairly easy to do post-stroke, but you might find that it's easier instead of doing um, gloves with individual fingers, you might find that it's easier to use mittens and even like a bigger mitten because then you could consider not um, necessarily separating your thumb and your fingers in the mitten and just have them all in the larger part to keep them warm and also just for comfort of trying to negotiate them through all things uh, to consider and please use continue to use whatever works best for you that you found. So another thing we're going to talk about today is adaptive equipment. So there are different kinds of fasteners you can use on um, shirts and pants and all sorts of stuff. But like with a button-up shirt, it doesn't necessarily have to be the standard type of buttons. It could be snap buttons. It could be, you could, some people have done where they sew the buttons on the other side and they sew Velcro into the um, seam of the shirt. And then that way it looks like it has buttons, but it's actually just a Velcro shirt. It's just one option. You can use other different types of fasteners and you find things that work better. So for um, putting on socks and shoes, you could try using something like a third circuit socks. You use a sock aid like this in the top um, right corner here of my screen. Um, so they're demonstrating with this one, you get the sock over the end and then you put your shoe in and you just sort of pull it up and then the sock's on. I know a couple of our participants have these and like them. So that's something <coughs> That you'd be interested in trying out, you know, that's something to look into. Uh, there are also zipper poles. It can be a lot easier than having to find and hold on to a small zipper to get your coat zipped up. So these kind of clip onto the zipper and then they give you a bigger loop that you can either hook a finger through instead of having to pinch and hold, or you could, um, they're just different ones for different hooking things, or you could pinch through the hole like they're showing in this one. Just different options for um, getting the same thing done and just doing it in a way that works better for you. 
There's also button hooks that you can check out, like are in the bottom right here. Um, you might not be able to see it great for the actual wire loop. So you put the loop over the button and then you put it through the shirt and then you use that to guide the button to the shirt rather than having it um, helps you to not have to rely on so much fine motor. It has a built up handle and then you use that to get the button through the hole and everything and then it pulls out without the button. So if you have any further questions on this topic, you're absolutely free to reach out to myself or Jeanette or any of us at the American Stroke Foundation. Um, and we'd be happy to try and help you and figure out a good answer for your question. All right. I also have my sources on here. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.